Craig Stapleton, right there below the skydiver wearing the camera, has just broken off from his partner while trying to perform a stunt. At 5,800 feet, a disaster is unfolding. His parachute is tangled. He flips. When he pulls his emergency chute, it goes straight into the tangled canopy. I pretty much figured I was dead. I mean, nothing has gone right. So the, the second I left the plane, nothing has gone right. And I just need one thing to go right. Can I just get one thing? I was thinking about my wife and kids and what was going to happen to them. And, you know, even if I lived, it was going to be a big lifestyle change for all of us. And, you know, I was just really sorry that I wasn't, you know, there to say goodbye to him. At 30 miles per hour, he slammed into what turned out to be pretty soft, freshly plowed dirt. And of all things, a row of grapes at a vineyard. His jump partner, a nurse, couldn't believe her eyes. I was pretty worried. You know, I thought I was watching my friend about to die. God, Buddha, Allah, baby Jesus, guardian angel, somebody. Somebody was watching out for me. It was like looking the devil right in the face. Kenny Steck battled a full-grown Alaskan grizzly bear and lived to tell about it. I remember thinking, I'm probably going to die right now. Steck suffered puncture wounds to his scalp, a broken shoulder blade, and deep gashes to his lower leg. But this morning, he is recovering at home. <sighs> the avid outdoorsman was hiking and camping with his wife and some friends. While filling up water bottles, a brown bear came running right for him. I remember um, feeling like the bear was swallowing me. One of his fangs had gone right into his head. Kenny's wife watched on helplessly as the bear took her husband's head in his mouth. Kenny instinctively put his leg between him and the massive predator. I remember thinking, this is how I'm gonna die. This is, this is gonna be it for me. And then for some reason, the bear just walked away. It wasn't my time to die and it wasn't my time to be taken. And I don't know why that is. Three men rescued off a tiny remote island in the Pacific using palm fronds to spell out help in the sand and waving those bright orange life jackets. Their ordeal beginning last Monday, several hundred miles north of Papua New Guinea. The men setting out from another isolated speck in the Pacific, their home village of Pulap in Micronesia. Population less than a thousand. Then just after two hours at sea, a massive wave capsizing their 19-foot skiff. The crew holding on to those life jackets and swimming nearly two miles in the dark. Washing up on a long deserted island, it had fishing shacks, but no way to contact help. After three days, a U.S. Navy plane receiving an alert about the missing men, first spotting that smoke signal, then that message in the sand. This was a huge win for us. It was a huge win for BP-5, and more importantly, it was a huge win for the three guys that were on the island. We have not seen uh, any, any situation like this before. The photo says it all. For 25 minutes of pure agony, Dale Ostrander was swept into a vicious riptide off of Long Beach, Washington. The 12-year-old was pulled out unconscious and not breathing. It has miracle written all over it. There's no real other word for it. The tides took him and another 12-year-old, Nicole Kissel, and pulled them underwater. Nicole tried to keep them afloat before the waves became too powerful to resist. I let him on the board first, and I got on top of him, grabbed the board, and he said, keep kicking, keep kicking. Captured here, Dale's church group prayed on the beach for his survival until rescuers finally pulled him from the water. Miraculously, the boy survived, just when no one expected him to live. Finally, on Sunday, Dale opened his eyes. We were trying to get him to cough. And come on, Dale, cough, cough, you need to cough. And he coughed once. It's okay, you need to do it again, do more. I don't need to, is what he said. First thing, we're like, looking at everybody, each other. he spoke. Oh yeah, my goodness, a full sentence. Me. It was amazing. Lost at sea and all alone. This morning, 68-year-old Florida diver Randy Fales sharing his harrowing story of a scuba trip gone wrong, all caught on his GoPro camera. Surfacing from a 30-minute dive Sunday stranded in 90 feet of water, 17 miles offshore. Came up at the end of the dive, uh, looked around, and no boat. Within minutes, some unwanted company. 
Watch as Fails uses his spear to keep the eight-foot shark at bay. First shark showed up and started uh, swimming around me and, and swimming towards me. And then he uh, swam by me and hit me with one of his pectoral fins. One hour after Fails surfaced, a second visitor. They started swimming around me in circles underneath and then swimming close. Still, he kept his cool, blowing a whistle using his neon yellow dive bag to signal for help. Unable to find him, Thales' family on the boat alerted the Coast Guard. I was desperate, I didn't know what to do. Finally, after 90 exhausting minutes, a fishing boat just happened to find Thales. A happy ending to one man's terrifying fish tale. On March 31st, she's driving to see her family in Phoenix. However, I took a wrong turn. Ending up in the remote Arizona wilderness, her car out of gas. There was no way to do anything other than camp in the car that night with Queenie, my dog, and Nike, my cat. On April 3rd, her car and her cat are found, but Rogers and her dog Queenie still missing. Cold, desperate to find water, and plants they can eat to survive. Every night, the cold set in, so I had to prepare my campfire, space for me and Queenie to squeeze together and curl up together for body warmth. For nine days, search teams come up empty. A few days later, searchers spot Queenie, and then this, a help signal made from rocks and sticks. The ground searchers found my note, please, please help. I need it now. Finally, a helicopter finds Rogers, remarkably not just alive after nine days, but able to walk to the chopper all on her own. Age does not necessarily mean inability. It can mean wisdom.